Aliens, non-sapient creatures. Husks. After the Geth secure a location, they round up and impale dead and living bodies on mechanical spikes. The spikes rapidly transform these victims into withered husks, extracting water and trace minerals and replacing them with cybernetics. The cybernetics reanimate the lifeless flesh and tissue, transforming the bodies into mindless killing machines. Some Alliance soldiers refer to the husk-generating spikes as dragon's teeth, a reference to the mythological berserkers who sprang up from the earth wherever the teeth of the dragon Ares were planted. Dragon's teeth and husks bear little resemblance to other pieces of Geth technology. No one is sure why a synthetic race would bother to drain the minuscule amount of recoverable resources from organic corpses, though the value of reusing them as shock troops is obvious. Husks, Scions Though the exact fate of species captured by the Collectors is unclear, the humanoid appearance of the Scions gives ghastly clues. The Scions' frame and skull are similar to those of a human or a Sari, but the bone structure is overlaid with a metallic resin. Posthumous examination of their bodies reveals a skin tone resembling that of Reaper husks, but their transformation process seems more extensive. Like husks, they are cybernetically modified on a nano scale, so they can operate even in a hard vacuum. Hoses, rather than veins or muscle tissue, join major portions of the body together. One arm is replaced with a construct that fits a large rifle, turning the creature into a humanoid weapons platform, and a fleshy sack is supported by the creature's back and head. These sacks contain brain matter and spinal tissue, too much to have come from just one victim. This indicates signs are an amalgam of several individuals, with one primary victim providing the frame and several secondaries providing the flesh for a decentralized semi-mechanical nervous system. This decentralization makes them highly resistant to gunshot wounds. Even a headshot is not a certain kill. The Scion's weapons, however, indicate that Scions retain some living tissue, or at least sustain some of the same electrochemical reactions as those of a human biotic. The weapon creates a powerful warp effect, which is consistent with the ESO nodules visible in the Scion's expansive nervous system. Given the rarity of human biotics, it seems likely that these dust form ESO nodules are deposited during their transformation, rather than requiring a biotic victim in the first place. Thresher Maws Thresher Maws are subterranean carnivores that spend their entire lives eating or searching for something to eat. Threshers reproduce via spores that can lie dormant for millennia, yet are robust enough to survive prolonged periods in deep space and atmospheric re-entry. As a result, fresher spores appear on many worlds, spread by previous generations of space travelers. The body of a thresher never entirely leaves the ground. Only the head and tentacles erupt from the earth to attack. In addition to physical attacks, freshers have the ability to project toxic chemicals in the mid-burst of infrasound as a shockwave weapon. The Alliance first encountered threshers on the colony of Akuz in 2177. After contact was lost with the Pioneer team, marine units were deployed to investigate. Ashore parties were set upon by hungry freshers, and nearly the entire assault force was killed. Alliance forces recommend engaging freshers with vehicle-mounted heavy weapons. Varen Varen are omnivores with a preference for living prey. Originally native to the Krogan homeworld of Tachanka, they are, like most life from Tachanka, savage, clannish, and consummate survivors. They are pack hunters when vulnerable prey is readily available and become scavengers when outnumbered or outclassed. Their supreme adaptability, vicious demeanor, and rapid breeding cycle have made them ubiquitous and dangerous pests on many worlds. Virtually everywhere the Krogan have been, Varen infestations have followed, wreaking havoc with the native ecology. The Krogan have had a love-hate relationship with Varen for millennia, alternately fighting them for territory and embracing them as treasured companions. To this day, Krogan raise them as beasts of war. A common subgenus of Varen has metallic silver scales, leading to the rather unusual nickname Fish Dogs. Arrival The Reaper's Secrets Object Row Dr. Amanda Kenson's scientific team has catalogued three major discoveries on the artifact encased in the 157 Golgotha asteroid. First, the large artifact is rooted into the core of the asteroid and has a barrier that is similar to but much more powerful than a biotic stasis field. This gives it an unnatural resistance to alteration or damage and even prevents state-of-the-art laser drilling from extracting the smallest piece for analysis. Second, the object's interior is energetically active with a quantum stasis field rivaling that of Prothean technology found in mass relays. 
like those creations, it activates in response to threat, at which point the artifact consumes a phenomenal amount of power. Dr. Kenson's team believes the object draws this power directly from dark matter, though how is still unknown. The third discovery is that this object broadcasts signals and information on many different spectra. One such pulse, suspected to be similar to a quantum entanglement communicator, reaches into Reaper territory. Another broadcast is infrasound, consistent with frequencies that trigger feelings of awe and fear in humans, a known factor in Reaper indoctrination. Kenson's laboratory is filled with equipment dedicated to monitoring any signal coming from the artifact in the hopes that some clue will prove the Reaper's undoing before it's too late. Planet, air taught. Nothing is impossible, says the hegemony propaganda poster that depicts a muscular Batarian miner under an air taught sky, his rebreather held away from his face as if he's just taken it off. The image sums up millions of man hours of labor on the Batarian planet and represents, or misrepresents, much of its history. Two decades ago, Aerotot, like several planets in the Scillian Verge, was claimed by both human and Batarian governments, but the Alliance backed out after learning about the atmosphere's dangerously low pressure and oxygen levels. Instead, they concentrated their colonial efforts on planets that could support human life without the aid of domed habitats and rebreathers. Human governments saw it as a wise move, Batarians saw it as cowardly. The Batarians rose to the colonization challenge, shipping in large numbers of laborers. They took the high financial costs and casualties due to accidents or logistical snafus in stride. Large-scale dumping of cyanobacteria has increased the oxygen in the atmosphere by a fraction of 1%, a modest increase that the hegemony trumpets as a sign of their eventual victory. Short-term profits on Aerotot are largely made in the mineral sector through mining the extremely metal-rich planetary crust. The dark side to the mining does not appear on the propaganda poster. The majority of laborers are indentured servants or slaves. Aerotot is rumored to have military bases on its surface and throughout its solar system, though details are heavily restricted by the hegemony's Ministry of Information Control. Human merchant ships rarely come to the planet, outcompeted by local companies that benefit from heavy economic protections. The average Aerotot citizen only sees humans on the news, usually featured in stories of trials and executions of accused spies. The Alpha Relay Discovering the age of a mass relay is not an easy task. Relays can shield themselves to preserve their integrity down to the quantum level, so taking a sample for analysis proves nigh impossible. Relays also maintain self-cleaning cycles, wiping away potential evidence, though damage or dormancy can cause this cycle to break down, such as in the case of the Charon relay, which became covered in ice. A breakthrough was recently made by Dr. Amanda Kenson, who revisited old methods of dating the relays by testing dust trapped in their gravity wells. By comparing the relative velocity of relays to that of the stars they orbit, as well as the composition of the dust around dormant relays against the dust at known locations in their star systems, Kenson could create a timeline of when a relay passed through the dust. The result dates the relay back millions of years. Some may even predate the Protheans. Kenson concluded that the oldest known relay is in Batarian space. Dubbed Alpha, it resides near the star Bahak and is unusual in its potential range and versatility. Alpha usually sends and receives mass at the range of a normal secondary relay, but if certain controls are adjusted, it becomes powered by an unprecedented amount of dark energy that could send cargo to 16 other relays and even across a great distance to the Citadel. Hegemony authorities have kept this quiet, fearing retaliation from Council species who would assume hostile intent if they found a sudden new route into their space. It goes without saying that the Reapers have no such fear. Cerberus Project Overlord Planet 8 Two beautiful moons, one spectacular ring, zero neighbors, says a popular advertisement for this Terminus system's world. 8 is known for its sparsely settled population despite being a garden planet with a colony nearly a century old. Blessed with a mild climate, wildlife no more dangerous than that on Earth, and soil and bacteria amenable to imported plants, 8 would appear to be an unexploited paradise. However, it is unpopular for two reasons. The first and most obvious is that its moon, Lite, is in an unstable orbit that will lead to a planetary impact and an extinction-level event within the next two centuries. As such, all investment in the planet is short-term, and the biggest business is selling off the local biota to the highest bidder. 
The second drawback is the level of violence on the planet. Like the rest of the Phoenix massing cluster, 8 was briefly considered part of Citadel space during its first wave of colonization. However, when the colony broke off to become an independent planet in 2133, the Council let the doomed planet go with less than a day of debate. Free from any real governing body, 8's history has since been filled with wars between small frontier town city-states over its resources. The result is a dangerous world where the average citizen is expected to be self-reliant to the point of fending for themselves against cutthroat corporations, strong-arm militia groups, and even Geth incursions. The fighting is so frequent that the name of the planet itself has changed more than 11 times. In a sign of blunt indifference, standard Citadel galaxy maps refer to the world by the name given to it by human colonists in the latter half of the century. Citadel and Galactic Government Battle of the Citadel In 2183, a rogue spectre named Saren Arterius attacked the Citadel through a functioning mass relay hidden inside a statue in the Presidium. Saren brought a combined force of Krogan and Geth infantry from Ilos, timing the attack so that he would be at the Citadel's controls when the Geth fleet and his flagship, Sovereign, arrived. In the battle that followed, the Destiny Ascension Dreadnought evacuated the Citadel Council, but ordered the ward's arms closed, sealing them and the Geth inside in an impregnable shell, cutting off any reinforcements or escape. This combative tactic would have wholly destroyed the Council fleet were it not for the actions of Commander Shepard, who had followed Saren through the relay from Ilos. Led by Shepard's ship Normandy, the Systems Alliance fleet assembled under the command of Admiral Hackett and waited just outside the Citadel's closed arms. Meanwhile, Shepard fought Saren's forces inside the Citadel and eventually forced the ward arms open again. The Normandy defended the Destiny Ascension as it fled, saving the lives of the Citadel Council. Taking its cue from the Normandy, the 5th Fleet supported the withdrawal and took heavy losses from Sovereign's advanced firepower. At about the same time Shepard killed Saren, Sovereign's once impervious kinetic barrier overloaded and the 5th Fleet focused its military might to shatter the flagship. The Geth Fleet was soon decimated without its leader. In gratitude for the many human lives sacrificed to save it, the Council made the unprecedented move of offering humans the chance to become a Council race. Ambassador Donnell Odina and Captain David Anderson accepted this honor on behalf of their species. Citadel Conventions These diplomatic talks occurred in the wake of the Krogan Rebellions, as a response to the destruction of the conflict and an attempt to distance the Council from the brutal Krogan warfare. The conventions regulate the use of weapons of mass destruction. A WMD causes environmental alteration to a world. A bomb that produces a large crater is not considered a WMD. A bomb that causes a nuclear winter is. Use of WMD is forbidden on garden worlds like Earth with ecospheres that can readily support a population. If a habitable world is destroyed, it will not be replaced for millions of years. The conventions do not forbid the use of WMD on hostile worlds or in sealed space station environments. Many militaries continue to develop and maintain stockpiles. The conventions graded weapons of mass destruction into tiers. Tier 1 is the greatest threat to galactic peace. Tier 1. Large kinetic impactors such as asteroid drops or deorbiting space stations. Effectively free and available in any system, in the form of debris left over from planetary accretion, Kinetic impactors are the weapon of choice for terrorists and third galaxy nations. Tier 2. Uncontrolled self-replicating weapons, such as nanotechnology, viral or bacteriological organisms, von Neumann devices, and destructive computer viruses. These weapons can lie dormant for millennia, waiting for a careless visitor to carry them onto another world. Tier 3. Large energy burst weapons, such as nuclear or antimatter warheads. Tier 4. Alien species deliberately introduced to crowd out native forms necessary for the health of an ecosystem. Ecological tampering can take years to bear fruit, making it difficult to prove. Citadel Council The Council is an executive committee composed of representatives from the Asaria Republics, the Turian Hierarchy, and the Salarian Union. Though they have no official power over the independent governments of other species, the Council's decisions carry great weight throughout the galaxy. No single council race is strong enough to defy the other two, and all have a vested interest in compromise and cooperation. Each of the council species has general characteristics associated with the various aspects of governing the galaxy. 
The Asari are typically seen as diplomats and mediators. The Salarians gather intelligence and information. The Turians provide the bulk of the military and peacekeeping forces. Any species granted an embassy on the Citadel is considered an associate member, bound by the Accords of the Citadel Conventions. Associate members may bring issues to the attention of the Council, though they have no input on the decision. The Human Systems Alliance became an associate member of the Citadel in 2165. Citadel Space Citadel Space is an unofficial term referring to any region of space controlled by a species that acknowledges the authority of the Citadel Council. At first glance, it appears that this territory encompasses most of the galaxy. In reality, however, less than 1% of the stars have been explored. Even Mass Effect FTL drive is slow related to the volume of the galaxy. Empty space and systems without suitable drive discharge sites are barriers to exploration. Only the mass relays allow ships to jump hundreds of light years in an instant, the key to expanding across an otherwise impassable galaxy. Whenever a new relay is activated, the destination system is rapidly developed. From that hub, FTL drive is used to expand the nearby star clusters. The result is a number of densely developed clusters thinly spread across the vast expanse of space, connected by the mass relay network. Citadel Station Citadel Security Services CSEC. Citadel Security is a volunteer police service answering to the Citadel Council. The 200,000 constables of CSEC are responsible for maintaining public order in the densely populated Citadel. They also provide pirate suppression, customs enforcement and search and rescue throughout the Citadel Cluster. CSEC has six divisions. Enforcement – uniformed officers who patrol the Citadel and respond to emergencies. Investigation – detectives who puzzle out the truth behind crimes and bring perpetrators to justice. Customs – screens the thousands of passengers and cargo containers that pass through the Citadel's ports every day. Network deals with cybercrimes like identity and copyright theft, hacking and viral attacks, and illegal artificial intelligence. Special Response deals with hostage situations, bombs, and heavily armed criminals. In the unlikely event that attackers board the Citadel, they are also the front line of defense, armed with military-grade equipment. Patrol Naval Arm, with ships stationed throughout the Citadel cluster. Unlike the other divisions, they are rarely seen at the Citadel, nor do they stay in one place long. Joining CSEC is prestigious. Applications must be sponsored by a Citadel Counselor or the Ambassador of an Associate Council race. Generally, applicants have many years of distinguished service in the military or police forces of their nation, but an inexperienced applicant with demonstrable talent will be fairly considered. CSEC and the Spectres are often at odds. Many CSEC members, notably current Executor Venari Palin, believe that allowing Spectres to be above the law is a dangerous practice. The actions of Saren Arterius lend credence to this position. The Spectres, in turn, are aggravated when CSEC's dedication to procedure and due process hampers their investigations. Citadel Station Foundations The undersides of the wards, between the inhabited superstructures and impenetrable outer hull, are called the Foundations. These dangerous areas are filled with life support systems and power plants. Officially, only the Keepers are allowed in the Foundations. In reality, the Foundations are the slums of the Citadel, home to criminals, minorities, transients and occasional stateless exiles. Some stay in the Foundations of their own will, others end up there when the opportunities they sought in the Citadel do not come. The Station's recycling systems are located in the Foundations. These manufacture a variety of artificial organic pastes that can be eaten for sustenance. They are free and nutritious, but nearly tasteless and of unpleasant texture. Horror Citadel residents quickly become adept at dressing up this bland fare with sauces and spices, while imported foodstuffs are a popular luxury for the wealthy. Citadel Station – Presidium Ring The ring is an enclosed loop of park-like space serving as the connection point for the wards. The interior walls are lined with the embassies of influential species and private residencies for the galaxy's elite. The Presidium is full of open-air restaurants, bars and luxurious meeting areas. Gravity is about one-third Earth normal. A holographic sky is projected over the ceiling of the ring. Unlike the 24-7 bustle of the warts, the Presidium maintains a 20-hour day schedule, with a 6-hour night where lights are dimmed and the sky goes through a night cycle. Offices and residences are often open to the interior. 
it is not unusual for embassies to have no exterior wall at all. This does not cause a crime problem due to the heavy CSEC presence and ubiquitous monitoring devices on the Presidium. Thieves are quickly identified and apprehended. The ring is the location of the Citadel spaceports. Being closer to the center of spin, there is less motion for a ship to match, and the reduced spin gravity makes handling cargo easier. Hundreds of ships pass through the Citadel every day, and every species with an embassy is granted a private dock. The tower, at the center of the ring, holds the administration of the Citadel Council. The tower rises over a kilometer from the ring, appearing to thrust forward parallel to the ward arms. As the tower is at the center of the spin axis, it experiences little centrifugal force. Gravity is maintained using mass effect fields at a 90 degree angle to the ring and wards. A consular dock can be found at the base of the tower. While normally used for diplomatic couriers and spectre business, the shuttles docked here can evacuate the council government in an emergency. Citadel Station, Serpent Nebula The Citadel is surrounded by a blue-tinted reflection nebula. The light of the nebula is actually light from the Citadel, scattered and reflected back at the station. At first, the Serpent Nebula was assumed to be made of microscopic construction debris. Prevailing theory holds that the Protheans used molecular nanotechnology to manufacture the incredibly durable materials used in the Citadel. But unlike other nebulae, the Serpent does not dissipate over time. Therefore, it must be replenished constantly. The current popular theory is that the non-recyclable waste collected by the Citadel's keepers is somehow rendered down to the atomic or molecular level and ejected into the cloud. The thick nebula presents a navigation hazard. Beyond the relatively clear areas around the Citadel, electrical discharges are common. These are not blocked by kinetic barriers and can severely damage metal-framed starships. In addition, some dense knots of dust can overwhelm the repulsion of kinetic barriers on smaller ships. If such a vessel is moving fast enough at the time, the effects are similar to being hit by a sandblaster. Attempting to reach the Citadel through open space navigation is unadvisable. The only safe approach is through the various mass relays that orbit it. Citadel Station Statistics Although the Citadel is equipped with mass effect generating element zero cores, most of the gravity on the station is generated by the centrifugal force of rotation. Rotation, 3.5 minutes per revolution. Rotational gravity in wards, 1.02 Earth. Rotational gravity in Presidium, 0.3 Earth. Total length, open, 44.7 kilometers. Diameter, open, 12.8 kilometers. Ward length, 43.6 kilometers. Ward width, 330 meters. Presidium ring diameter, 7.2 kilometers. Presidium ring width, 503 meters. Exterior armor thickness, 13 meters. Population, 13.2 million, not including keepers. Gross weight, 7.11 billion metric tons. Height of the Presidium Tower, 1,047 meters. Citadel Station, Wards. The majority of the Citadel's population lives in the wards, the five massive arms of the station that house the residential and commercial districts. Many galactic races have established cultural enclaves here. Population density and cost of living are extremely high, akin to Earth cities such as Hong Kong and Singapore. The wards are open-topped, with skyscrapers rising from the superstructure. Towers are sealed against vacuum, as the breathable atmosphere envelope is only maintained to a height of about 7 meters. The atmosphere is contained by the centrifugal force of the rotation and a membrane of dense, colorless sulfur hexafluoride gas, held in place by carefully managed mass effect fields. The view from the wards is spectacular. In the background, stars, serpent nebula, and the nearby blue giant called the Widow move across the sky as the station rotates to stabilize itself. In the foreground, the lights of buildings and vehicles on the opposing ward arms perpetually shine. The Citadel has no real day or night. While the station keeps to standard galactic time for political functions, businesses rarely close, and residents acclimate to sleep and work according to personal need rather than a day-night cycle. Additions and modifications are constantly being constructed, though they must stay within certain specifications that will not compromise the operation of the station. Occasionally, the keepers will descend on an area of the wards and move or change the architecture without explanation. Residents have learned to live with these inexplicable intrusions. Treaty of Phyrexen 
Due to the destructive potential of dreadnoughts, the Council races agreed at the Phyrexian Naval Conference to fix a ratio of dreadnought construction between themselves. At the top of the pyramid is the peacekeeping Turian fleet. Below the Turians are the other Council races, currently the Asari and Solarians. Council associate races are at the bottom. The Human Systems Alliance is part of this last group. The ratio of Turian to Council to associate dreadnoughts is 5 to 3 to 1. For every dreadnought humans are permitted to build, the Asari have three, and the Turians five. Humanity and the Systems Alliance Earth The homeworld and capital of humanity is entering a new golden age. The resource wealth of a dozen settled colonies and a hundred industrial outposts flows back to Earth, fueling great works of industry, commerce and art. The great cities are greening as arcology skyscrapers and telecommuting allow more efficient use of land. Earth is still divided among nation-states, though all are affiliated beneath the overarching banner of the Systems Alliance. While every human enjoys a longer and better life than ever, the gap between rich and poor widens daily. Advanced nations have eliminated most genetic disease and pollution. Less fortunate regions have not progressed beyond 20th century technology and are often smog-choked, overpopulated slums. Sea levels have risen 2 meters in the last 200 years, and violent weather is common due to environmental damage inflicted during the late 21st century. The past few decades, however, have seen significant improvements due to recent technological advances. First Contact War Humanity's first contact with an alien race occurred in 2157. At that time, the Alliance allowed survey fleets to activate any dormant mass relays discovered, a practice considered dangerous and irresponsible by Council-aligned races. When a Turian patrol discovered a human fleet attempting to reactivate a relay, they attacked. One human vessel survived, retreating to the colony of Shanxi. The Turians followed, quickly defeating the local forces. Shanxi was occupied, the first and to date only human world to be conquered by an alien species. The Turians believed the handful of ships they defeated represented the bulk of human defenses, so they were unprepared when the second fleet under Admiral Castany Drescher launched a strong counter-offensive, evicting them from Shanxi. The Turians mobilized for full-scale war, drawing the attention of the rest of the galaxy. The Council quickly intervened, forcing a truce. Fortunately for humanity, the first contact war was ended with a diplomatic solution. Gagarin Station, Jump Zero Gagarin Station is the largest deep space station built by humanity, a bernal sphere design with a 500 meter diameter habitable area. It was constructed beyond Pluto, nearly 80 astronomical units, 12 billion kilometers from Sol. Moving crew and material to this location bankrupted most of the backers. Gagarin was placed at the inner edge of the heliopause, the point at which the solar wind can no longer push back the interstellar medium. It was built to test a number of faster-than-light drive principles that theoretically could only occur in interstellar space. The station was nicknamed Jump Zero, as it was intended to be the jumping-off point for humanity's expansion into the galaxy. Shortly after the station was completed, the Prophean ruins were discovered on Mars, rendering the entire effort moot. After struggling to make a profit for a decade, Gagarin was sold to the Systems Alliance in 2159 for a fraction of its construction costs. The Alliance refurbished it as a research and training center for the recently discovered biotic phenomenon. In 2169, the biotic acclimation and training program was shut down and Gagarin became a general research facility. Its remote location and intentional isolation from the extranet makes it popular for dangerous research, particularly in the field of artificial intelligence. Humanity's first stable AI, the Alliance-sponsored ELISA, achieved sapience at Gagarin in 2172. Today, Gagarin Station has a permanent population of approximately 9,000. A plan has been proposed to move it to the gravitationally stable barycenter point between Pluto and the Charon Relay, allowing it to serve as a gateway facility between the Sol and Arcturus systems. The high cost of safely moving its mass has delayed this indefinitely. Genetic Engineering in the 22nd century, manipulation of the human genome became commonplace. Techniques of genetic engineering advanced to the point where rich could custom-build fetuses that grew into stronger, smarter and more attractive adults. In more permissive regions, custom-designed lifeforms and uplifted animals occupied an ill-defined niche between property and sapient being. 
Travel to planets with unique forms of life brought an awareness that Earth's unique biodiversity could be lost if sliced and hybridized to gain useful alien qualities. The Sutton Walcott Generic Heritage Act was passed by the Systems Alliance Parliament in 2161. It imposed sharp restrictions on controversial uses of genetic engineering, but provided government subsidies for beneficial applications. Screening and Therapy Most governments provide free assessments and corrective therapy for genetic diseases in prospective parents. This has nearly eliminated everything from cystic fibrosis to nearsightedness. The earlier screening and therapy is performed, the more comprehensive the results. Though ideally performed on artificially fertilized zygotes in a lab, procedures are available for embryos in the womb and newborns, out of respect for personal beliefs. Enhancement Improvement of natural human abilities is legal, but adding new abilities is not. Treatments to improve strength, reflexes, mental acuity, or appearance are permitted. Adding a till or the ability to digest cellulose is not. Some genetic enhancement is provided for free to Alliance military recruits, but the average citizen must pay for the privilege. The process can take years to reach fruition in an adult. Engineering Artificial hybridization of genes from compatible non-human species with human genetic code is illegal. Creation of designed life is broadly legal and mainly used for terraforming and medical applications. But sentient creatures are heavily regulated, and creation of sapient life is outlawed by both the Systems Alliance and the Citadel Council. Systems Alliance – Geological Survey As the human race expands its territory and raises the general standard of living, demand for industrial resources continues to grow. Many planets, moons and asteroids contain a wealth of resources, but many systems have barely been charted, let alone thoroughly surveyed. Unmanned probes are one solution, but they are often lost to space hazards, unforeseen circumstances or theft by salvagers. In recent years, Aegis, the Alliance Geological Service, has offered bounties to private individuals or teams willing to perform mineralogical surveys on the frontier. This survey data is made publicly available to further corporate development. Due to the cost of travel and the dangers of operating on hostile worlds, it is rarely a profitable endeavor. Light Metals Metals with low atomic weight are often used in the construction of spacecraft and vehicles. Heavy metals. Metals with higher atomic weights are used to construct equipment components. The platinum group elements are particularly useful. Rare earths. Most useful materials in this category are radioactives or magnets. Gases. Various gases are required to support all known forms of sapient life. Some are commonly used as fuel. Systems Alliance – Military Doctrine The Alliance military is of great concern to the galaxy. At first contact with the Turians, they were completely inexperienced. Turian disdain changed to respect after the relief of Shanji, where the humans surprised them with novel technologies and tactics. The human devotion to understanding and adapting to modern space warfare stunned the State Council races. For hundreds of years, they had lived behind secure walls of long-proven technologies and tactics. The Council regards the Alliance as a sleeping giant. Less than 3% of humans volunteer to serve in their military, a lower proportion than any other species. While competent, Alliance soldiers are neither as professional as the Turians nor as skilled as the Asari. Their strengths lie in fire support, flexibility and speed. They make up for lack of numbers with sophisticated technical support, VIs, drones, artillery, electronic warfare, and emphasis on mobility and individual initiative. Their doctrine is not based on absorbing and dishing out heavy shocks like the Turians and Krogan. Rather, they bypass enemy strongpoints and launch deep into their rear, cutting supply lines and destroying headquarters and support units, leaving enemies to wither on the vine. On defense, the human military is a rapid reaction force that lives by Sun Tzu's maxim, he who tries to defend everything, defends nothing. Garrisons are intended for scouting rather than combat, avoiding engagement to observe and report on invaders using drones. The token garrisons of human colonies make it easy for alien powers to secure them, for which the Alliance media criticizes the military. However, the powerful fleet stations at phased gate nexuses, such as Arcturus, are just a few hours or days from any colony within their sphere of responsibility. In the event of an attack, they respond with overwhelming force. Systems Alliance – Military Jargon Ashore When a ship's crew leaves the vessel, they are ashore. Though normally used regarding planets, it can refer to boarding a space station. Away. 
When a ship releases the equipment tethering it to a space station or surface dock, it is away. Aye aye. The proper way to acknowledge an order. If told to attack, the correct response is aye aye, sir. If asked, are you proud to be a marine, the correct response is yes, sir. ASAP, pronounced ASAP, an acronym of as soon as possible. Delay, stop, cease. Bridge, the navigation center of a spacecraft where the steering is done. Captain's mast, non-judicial disciplinary proceedings by unit commanders. CIC, combat information center, the combat center of a spacecraft. The CIC is filled with center displays to make sense out of the chaos of combat. DC, damage control. The containment and repair of damage to a spacecraft. ECM. Electronic countermeasures used to avoid enemy sensors from passive emissions masking to active jamming. EVA. Extravehicular activity. Time spent in a pressure suit outside of a vehicle, spacecraft or station. Flank. The flank is the side of a military formation. Since the soldiers are facing elsewhere, an enemy that can attack the flank can often turn it or roll it up. FNG. Freaking new guys. A derisive terms for inexperienced personnel. Ground side. The surface of a planet. Helmsman. The crew member who pilots a spacecraft. Ladar. Light amplified detection and ranging. An active sensor that bounces lasers off an object to determine its bearing and distance. Ladar has sufficient resolution that the data can be reconstructed into an image. Shore party. Spacecraft crew sent ashore on official business. Silent running, an old submariner's term used aboard Normandy to denote when stealth systems are active. SITREP, abbreviation of Situation Report, an evaluation of the current military situation. SPACER, someone who has spent most of their life in space. EXO, Executive Officer, the second in command of an Alliance warship. The EXO is responsible for administrative and personnel matters. Systems Alliance, military ranks. The Alliance uses a modified version of the ranking system that has been used for hundreds of years. Soldiers are classified into rank and file enlisted personnel, experienced non-commissioned officers, and specially trained officers. The divide between naval personnel and ground forces, marines, is small. Ground units are a specialized branch of the fleet, just as fighter squadrons are. This unity of command is imposed by the futility of fighting without control of orbit. Without the Navy, any army is pointless. The Marines, as a matter of pride, maintain some of their traditional rank titles. For example, Marines have privates and corporals instead of servicemen. In ascending order of responsibility, the ranks of the Alliance are Enlisted Serviceman 3rd Class or Private 2nd Class Serviceman 2nd Class or Private 1st Class Serviceman 1st Class or Corporal NCOs Service Chief Gunnery Chief Operations Chief Officers, Second Lieutenant, First Lieutenant, Staff Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander, Staff Commander, Captain or Major, Rear Admiral or General, Admiral, Fleet Admiral. Systems Alliance, N7. The Alliance Military Vocational Code System classifies the career path of all serving personnel. The MVC consists of one letter and one number. A soldier's MVC indicates proficiency, not rank. The letter denotes career path, the number indicates level of experience, as indicated by service record, technical scores and commendations. All 26 letters are used, and numbers run from 1 to 7. N is the letter code for Special Forces personnel. Terra Firma Party Terra Firma is an alliance political party formed after the first contact war. Its policy agenda is based on the principle that Earth must stand firm against alien influences. This covers a variety of legislation. Recent activities by Terra Firma include opposition to a law requiring high school alien language study, a proposal to increase tariffs on alien imports, and leading a popular movement to mark the first contact war with a public holiday. Though founded by well-meaning individuals who feared the submersion of native human cultures under a wave of alien vogue, Terra Firma's agenda attracts many jingoists and xenophobes. Timeline 2069 Armstrong Outpost at Shackleton Crater becomes the first human settlement on Luna. It is formally founded on July 24th, the 100th anniversary of the first lunar landing. 2103. Lowell City in Eos Chasma becomes the first human settlement on Mars. 2137. 
Eltfell Ashland Energy Corporation demonstrates helium-3 fuel extraction from the atmosphere of Saturn. 2142. Construction of Gagarin Station, Jump Zero, begins beyond the orbit of Pluto. 2148. Prospectors discover the Prophean ruins at Promethea Planum on Mars. 2149. Translation of Prophean data leads humans to the Charon Mars Relay. Systems Alliance founded to coordinate exploration and colonization of extrasolar worlds. 2151. A shipping accident at Singapore International Spaceport exposes downwind communities to containers of Dust Forum Element Zero. Alliance begins construction of Arcturus Station. 2152. Roughly 30% of the children born in Singapore after Element Zero exposure suffer from cancerous growths. Systems Alliance begins settlement of Earth's first extrasolar colony world, the planet Demeter. 2154. Commander Shepard Bourne. 2155. Systems Alliance occupies completed portions of Arcturus Station as a headquarters. 2156. Some children of Singapore exhibit minor telekinetic abilities. 2157. Turians encounter human explorers. First contact war. Occupation and liberation of the human colony of Shanxi. 2158. Humans learn potential of biotics. An international effort to track element zero exposures begins. Roughly 10% of exposed children show some level of biotic ability. 2160. Systems Alliance Parliament formed. 2165. Humans establish embassy on Citadel. 2170. Materian slavers attack the Alliance colony of Mindwar. 2176. Skillian Blitz. Pirates and slavers attack Elysium, the human capital in the Skillian Verge. 2177. Fresher Maws devour the Alliance colony of Akuz. 2178. In retaliation for the Skillian Blitz, an Alliance fleet wipes out an army of slavers on the moon of Torfin. 2183. Geff, led by rogue specter Saren Arterius, attacked the Citadel, ensuing in a battle that cost thousands of lives. A few weeks later, the SSV Normandy is ambushed and destroyed. Commander Shepard is presumed dead. 2185, current date. Planets and locations. Ilos. Like the ancient human city of Troy, Ilos is a world known only through second-hand sources. References to Ilos have been found at several other Prophean ruins, though direct study of the world is unlikely to occur. Ilos lies in a remote area of the Terminus systems only accessible by the legendary Mu Relay. 4,000 years ago, the Mu Relay was knocked out of position by a supernova and lost. Since then, Ilos and its cluster have been inaccessible. Occasionally, a university will organize an expedition to chart a route to Ilos using conventional FTL drive. These never get beyond the planning stages due to the distance and danger. A journey could take years or decades passing through the hostile Terminus systems and dozens of unexplored systems. Purgatory Originally an Ark ship designed to carry agricultural animals, the Purgatory was taken by the Blue Sun's mercenary company during a large-scale battle in the Skillian Verge. In a years-long reconstruction of its interior, the Blue Suns repurposed it to hold sapient prisoners, supposedly because they captured so many in their conflicts throughout the galaxy. When media outlets started investigating claims that the ship was used for slaving operations, the Blue Suns turned a public relations nightmare into a regular income source. Claiming to be in full accordance with Citadel law, the crew of Purgatory now regularly lands on planets or space stations claiming that they can no longer hold their prisoners because of cost overruns. To avoid keeping prisoners under inhumane conditions, they will have to release them at the nearest port, dumping the scum of the galaxy directly into the local population. Faced with such a scenario, the government usually grants Purgatory's crew massive discounts in fuel, food and repairs as long as they go away. Some even offload their own prisoners to Purgatory for a fee, grateful to have a problem relocated somewhere other than their backyard. Such unfortunates go in the dark depths of the ship, never to be seen again by their families or contacts. Purgatory is minimally armed with Guardian defenses. Though a cruiserweight ship, it relies on the Blue Sun's fighters to prevent any attacks bent on a jailbreak or similar events. The Migrant Fleet The flotilla, or the Migrant Fleet, 
is a fleet of roughly 50,000 starships that houses over 17 million quarians. The largest collection of starfaring vessels in the galaxy, the fleet is so large it may take days for all the ships to pass through a mass relay. The ships are constantly repaired, replaced and upgraded to comfortably house as many quarians as possible. Typically, ships specialize in roles for the fleet, from the enormous agricultural life ships to the shielded lab ships to the repurposed freighters known as home ships that house quarian children, young parents and educators. Employed quarians typically live in the ship they work on, since commuting from ship to ship ties up resources with unnecessary docking procedures. Even within the flotilla, quarians on most ships will remain encased in their protective suits. Rarely, quarians will meet on clean ships for specific purposes such as medical services or reproduction. When this occurs, they remove their suits, knowing full well that it is likely they will spend a few days having allergic reactions or getting over infections as their weakened immune systems compensate for each other's presence. Vermeer Vermeer is a lush world located on the frontier of the Attican Traverse. Its vast seas and orbital position on the inner life zone have created a wide equatorial band of humid, tropical terrain. Only the political instability of the region has impeded efforts at colonization. Many times, the Citadel has opened negotiations to settle Vermeer with the various criminal gangs and petty dictatorships in the nearby terminus systems. All fell apart due to internal power shifts within the opposing parties. The Citadel has written off the colonization of Vermeer as impossible without significant political change. The Terminus powers themselves are unlikely to ever settle Vermeer. Most lack the resources to support settlement on a virgin world, finding it more expedient to steal from their neighbors than build for themselves. Publications Ascension Written by human author Drew Carpishan, the popular military historical novel Ascension focuses on several lives warped or destroyed by the human survivalist called Cerberus. Following the Citadel attack of 2182 and the accelerated rise of human influence in the galaxy, Cerberus instituted Ascension, a secret biotics program aimed at producing a superhuman warrior. Biotics prodigy Jillian Grayson, a 12-year-old autistic girl, suffered the sins of her father, a secret Cerberus operative and red sand addict. Paul Grayson was ensnared in a web of criminality involving a Quarian traitor and extending to Seren Arterius, the Geth and a terminal threat to the Quarian flotilla. Having fled to the Terminus systems with his daughter after exposure of Cerberus's link to Ascension, Grayson was pursued by Jillian's teacher, scientist Kaylee Sanders, initiating a chain of tragedies that demonstrated Cerberus's nearly unlimited power and boundless ambition. Fornax Launched in 2167, Fornax magazine describes itself as the galaxy's finest xenophilia. By its fifth year, Fornax became the first human magazine to offer full five-sensory stimulation, a previously unaffordable magazine technology made profitable by the economy of scale. With a monthly publishing run of 127 million, available both in hard copy and direct download, Fornax offers a range of alien models with particular emphasis on the unisexual Asari, although both genders of Quarians, Drell, Batarians and Volus are regularly depicted. Specialty editions such as Genet Elcor and Crogasm service devoted but smaller markets. Revelation Revelation is a popular military historical novel by human writer Drew Karpishan that dramatizes human conflicts and political expansion following the 2148 discovery of the Prophean mass relay on Pluto and the beginning of human galactic exploration. In 2165, years before his rise to political prominence, Lieutenant David Anderson was a young veteran of the Turian War, investigating the destruction of a top-secret military research station, Shangxi. Every scientist stationed at Xianxi had been slaughtered except Kaylee Sanders, who had disappeared with secret files, making her Anderson's prime suspect. The book traced Anderson's dangerous investigation of Sanders, which included run-ins with Blue Sun's mercenaries and a Krogan bounty hunter. The investigation uncovered illegal research into AI and forced Anderson into an alliance with human-hating Turian Spectre Saren Arterius, who would eventually enter into a genocidal collaboration with the Geth. Shadow Games The Broker's Secrets The Yag. The Yag are a race of massive apex predators from the world of Parnak, whose rise to sentience in no way blunted their violent nature. A group of Yag is unable to cooperate until a single leader has been determined, through either social maneuvering or brute force, but no grudges are held once a Yag establishes dominance. 
Former rivals served their new superior's purpose with unflinching loyalty and relentless determination, a legacy of their origin as a pack species. Their eight eyes are another sign of their hunter ancestry. All four pairs are geared towards tracking down and predicting the movement of prey. Sophisticated and keenly developed sensitivity to movement and light have made the arcs masters at reading body language, regardless of species. Much to their short-lived chagrin, the Council's first contact teams discovered it was nearly impossible to lie to the Yag. The Yag had technology equivalent of the 20th century Earth standards when they were discovered by the Council in 2125. The Council's ambassadors approached the Yag as friends and allies instead of subordinates, a baffling sign of contempt from newcomers on Parnak. The Yag attacked when it became apparent that the alien diplomats stubbornly considered themselves sovereign people instead of new underlings. Parnak remains off-limits by order of the Council, which fears that the Yag's size, aggression and obsession with control make them poorly suited for integration into the galactic community.